Yeah, you're right. I was uh, eight or nine years old when they were. Wow, won. okay. Uh, right. so I, I wasn't really watching the Grammys when that happened. Um, you know, uh, for me, it was, it was I, I grew up hearing about Millie Vanilli and of course the music, uh, the VH1 behind the scenes episode, was a huge episode that was played over and over again on TV. And I remember watching that. Um, uh, so it was always kind of in the back of my mind. Um, and as I grew up and became a filmmaker, I wanted to make a music documentary one day. Uh, and what happened was I stumbled upon a video of Fabrice telling his story um, at the Moth at New York City. And he's in a in front of a microphone and sharing what happened to him. And at the end, he sang. And he had this wonderful voice. And I thought, well, wait a minute. I thought, I thought these two, these two guys couldn't sing and that this whole thing was like, you know, it, that's, that these that's what I saw too, actually. And uh, when I listened to the Fabrice song, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. So it, it made me go, well, wait, why did he ever decide to lip sync? And that just started me down a rabbit hole. And that's what led me to Frank Ferry and the producer finding out he had done this before. And then I thought, well, what would it be like if I were the singer in those shoes? And I, I came to realize that what we know of Millie Vanilli is all surface levels, all headlines, is all tabloids. What we don't know is the machine that created Millie Vanilli. We don't know the journey of these two kids that became overnight famous and then infamous and ultimately lost Rob's life. Like we don't know the human side of this story. And that's what I really wanted to explore. Well, the thing is, you know, there were not many black people in Munich at the time. So right. when, when, when we met, it was very competitive and it felt like we were uh, arch enemies from the outside. Like, oh man, we're competing, you know, but in the end we realized like, hey, you know, that could be a nice friend. And we always laughed, we made jokes with each other, calling it, hey star, calling each other star. And eventually we I realized that he was alone, just like I was. We're just playing the role. And by when we came together, we felt like, whoa, now we're stronger than ever. Our unity gave us power, you know, and it was someone that, that loved music just like I did, who loved dancing like I did. And by sitting down and talking, we realized that we had the same dreams and aspirations. So music, getting into the music industry was really our goal, becoming songwriters was really the goal. We all also wanted to go to engineering school, mm. but the money went somewhere else. So we didn't go to that engineering school so we could learn how to engineer and use drum machines. We didn't know, we, you know, that was really the goal. We planned all that, but, you know, we went this way. Unfortunately, it fell into our laps. Frank Farron, the big producer came to us and we thought it was going to be the, the opportunity of a lifetime, but it turned into a dream slash nightmare and the youth is all we had we had no experience and when we signed this contract there was no management and no attorneys present to protect us and say hey wait wait wait, wait a second don't sign this now or even after we signed it someone to oversee the relationship between the producer and the artist there's usually someone in the middle but there was nobody so they were able to just manipulate us and hmm. take us to that water having us drink that water and mm -hmm. then after that when we tasted that water and the success well we, we stayed in it even though this first single we thought okay we do that first single and we walk away after that but that's not what happened it became so successful and then because we tasted that that success in that life then we stayed in it Yeah, we, we had a, an archival team that scoured all the sources, not just the internet, but went to production houses, news stations, anything mm -hmm. you think of um, to find the footage. Because that, that you're right, I, I wanted to make sure and do as little recreation as possible. I wanted to make you feel their journey as authentically as possible. And so the only way to do it was to find rare footage. Also, we got lucky in that um, Ingrid... Uh, who was Frank Farian's assistant, who we interviewed. Um, when she came to her interview, she brought a box. And in the box were all of these photos that no one has seen 
all of these original photos that maybe people have seen but they haven't seen the original and tapes from the MTV concerts. So we had these incredible footage that no one had seen. And we also reached out to people who had been to their concerts and filmed with a handy cam and stuff. Yeah. And so any of that stuff that we could use where it just, it made you feel like you were in the audience or it made you feel like you're backstage or, you know, um, that, that was, uh, that was a huge, uh, integral part of making the film. Yeah. It took, it took advantage of us. It took of us advantage of our youth. He exploited us and wanted to keep on exploiting us. I, right. The forgiving part is I understood emotionally mm. after a little spending time on myself and working on myself that I would have, in order to, to regain my self-esteem, I had to forgive not only myself, but him as well. And that was very difficult. But when I made the choice, because it's all about choice, when I made the choice to do that, I noticed that it was cutting a tie mm -hmm. you know, because you know, otherwise you played in your head over and over and over. So to stop that, I forgive him. And then I felt better. I really, it took some time for me to, to feel the action of feeling better because it's always about cause and effect, but I felt it. And then I walked away slowly from all those emotions because I was angry, you know, about Rob's death. My, my friend, the person that, that understood exactly what it was to, to, to walk in my shoes, all those moments we spent together. It would have been nice to have Rob today reminisce about the early beginnings. And mm -hmm. he took that, you know, by, by doing what he did and by, by handling the way he handled the business, instead of having, you know, vocal producers and to work as a team, he said, okay, maybe, you, and he never tried to, he never tried our vocals. Right. That's the he same. He just wanted to use us as accessories instead of, making us part of a team and say, okay, we're going to try that. Let's figure that apart and we'll get to that level. It was not, it was all about his plan and duplicating the system that he had used with Bonnie M. That's the one thing people don't know, but he did that before by singing the vocals of the, the singer in Bonnie M, Bobby Farrell. So he was trying to duplicate and he paid everyone. He orchestrated everything. He separated everyone. And he really premeditated, premeditated everything. So for me, yes, I had a lot of anger and animosity to it. It's the only way I could do it. The one thing I want to overturn is the fact that, you know, people called us all kinds of names. And I, wanted to, I want them to overturn. I want them to look at us as human beings, not as those big stars. And that's what Luke did by having people walk into our shoes, the human aspect of who we were, of who we are, shows up in a documentary. And they'll realize how much pain we were into and how much we thought, you know, it was not like, oh yeah, we're not gonna sing. It was not like that, We'd be, we were fighting. But things came into the, the play, drugs, alcohol came into play because we had to, you know, to, to deal with the pain and the fact that we couldn't sing on the record because, but we were already traveling those waters. It was no more escaping. But when it was time to jump away from it, we pushed Frank really hard. And then he went to Reuters and said, they didn't sing on the record, but that's something that we made happen because we knew he was never gonna let us sing. As opposed to have the labels in America and in Germany come together and say, hey, let's, get the guys in the studio, and it would have been a much bigger story in the end if we would have done that. So for Rob, I want them to look at, his, as, as, at him like a human being. And he lost his life too because of everything that had happened and that was done to us. I think I touched that man. Yeah. No? Hmm. Millie Vanilli is the most, was extremely polarizing and they were so massively successful. Um, you know, 10 million records, 30 million albums. They were as popular as Michael Jackson that year. They had three number one hits and they were with the greatest music label in the world by the biggest kingmaker at the time, Clive Davis. So right. there was all of that combined with the fact that they won a Grammy. And this is pre auto tune, pre social YouTube media stars, pre social media. Us really accepting 
pop music and as just pure entertainment at mm. the time they took it a little too seriously and in the industry people um really had an axe to grind and so i think that people wanted to make an example out of them and also i think if it happened today uh it would be a completely different story yeah you know I people would be, like, with you. Right. People yeah. would be like oh yeah okay whatever <laughs> yeah, on. yeah. Right. Let him sing. Let him sing and show what they got. Yeah, that's it. And also, right, right, right. They, you they can put it with that on YouTube right now, <laughs> right? Yeah, and also think being in America, two Europeans, um, being black, wearing what they wore, doing rhythmic rap, everything was new. Everything Fresh. was different. Everything was 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 so magnetic. Even in 19, late 1980s, when things were weird, anyway, they they stood out. And so when they rose to the top so quickly, I think that there was so much hate that came with that mm -hmm. and the Grammy kind of sealed the deal. Right, right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Fabrice and Luke. I had a great time talking to you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. No thank you.